in their lives. I can't forget in the year 2010, we are, I was still in our church in Dartford, and we had the dedication of our facility, church facility in that place. And I can't forget, God's servant came on the altar, and after blessing, he said to the people, I was there included, and he said, many of you, one day, facilities like this, you will build and hand over to the church. You will build churches. He made that statement on the altar, and from then, I caught a kingdom dream. One day, I will build a church. I will build churches. And I'm, one day, I will build not just churches, but churches like that one. I will build churches. I will build churches. And then one day, I came to the office, and I was going through some papers, documents that came from, from various locations. And I saw a particular zone in the church that required renovation. At that time, I couldn't build a church. But I said, now, I can do renovation. Rome is not built in a day. But Rome is built with some blocks. So I took that paper and I kept it aside. Processing all the others. And then I said, go and do this estimation. And they did the estimation. And brought what it would take for that place to be renovated. And the truth was this. Naturally, I didn't have it in my hand. Because someone is hearing this for the first time. So I said, what will I do? I took the car that I had and sold the car and renovated it to the zone. That singular act changed my level. From renovating a zone by the grace of God, we have not started doing 100 like he has done. 100, 100. But we have started doing one like that. One like that. Little by little. Is somebody getting it now? Rome was not built in a day. But it was built with blocks. Start with one block. You will finish building Rome. Say with me, I will catch a dream. Louder like you mean it, I will catch a dream. This is important. So you and I must make sure we are catching dreams. We are catching dreams. We are catching dreams. Catching dreams to advance the kingdom. That's what ultimately makes the difference. That's all what ultimately makes the difference. Years ago, I remember a, a particular brother came and he was to make a request. Welfare, this is as far back as 2006 or seven. Make a welfare request. And I said, what is the issue? He said, I was looking for accommodation. And then he brought the bill that he was to pay for the accommodation. It was 6,000 naira. I said, God forbid that I will carry 6,000 naira and be processing the paper from one end to the other. Even the motion is more than the cost. I said, uh, this will be my beginning of paying rent for people. So I said, come here. Six you said 6,000 naira? 6,000 naira. Okay, good. Here is 6,000 naira. Go and pay for the accommodation. That was the beginning of paying rents. Levels never change. They never change until hearts begin to change. It is not everything you pass on. Uh, uh, this brother, he needs shoe. This brother, he needs shirt. This brother, he needs, he needs belt. No. Start from somewhere. Take off the belt you have. Give it to him. Catch a dream. Understand that what you are doing is the foundation of what you are seeing. What you do today is the foundation of what you will see tomorrow. Catch a dream. Say with me, I will catch a dream. It is clear from scriptures that the end time program of God is to bring the people of God into a realm of stupendous wealth. Unusual abundance. Wealth that goes beyond human imagination or description. In fact, it says in the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 to 9, it said that I will shake the heavens, I will shake the earth, I will shake the sea, I will shake the dry lands. It said I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord. What am I talking about? The silver is mine. And the gold is mine. And the glory of the later house shall be far greater than the former. 
God has a package of unimaginable wealth for the end time church. In fact, here comes the description. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 5. Look at what the word of the Lord says. It says here, to show you how unimaginable it is, he said, thou shalt see and flow together. Thy heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. And the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Thou shalt see. That is, you and I will see it in our lives. And it says that when we see it, our hearts will be enlarged. It will be fearful dimension of abundance. That is what God has in store for you and for me. That is the package he has in store for the end time church. Fearful. I call it oceanic dimension of wealth. Undepletable. Fetch water from the ocean. It does not go down. Undepletable dimension of wealth. You can deplete a river. You can deplete a lake. You can deplete a stream. You can surely deplete a well. But you cannot deplete the ocean. In fact, you struggle many times to keep the ocean from engulfing the land. We see it in Lagos. Don't we see it? You get to Lagos Island and you discover that there are barricades now trying to stop the water from coming out. The water they have been fetching from didn't go down. It went up. That is the dimension God has in store for the end time church. Is somebody getting the picture now? But as glorious as the provision is, it is only predicated on meeting the condition. And the condition that qualifies you and I for this dimension of abundance packaged for these last days is the condition of our giving. Giving is the covenant condition that gives us access to the provision of abundance. Genesis 8 verse 22, it says, As long as the earth remains, among other things, seed time and harvest shall not cease. And part of the seed is our finances. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 and verse 7, it says, He that sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man as he proposes in his heart, so let him give. So giving is sowing and it is sowing that produces reaping. This is so important. So according to the scripture, the covenant of giving and receiving is the foundational requirement for you and I gaining access to God's abundance and the anchor of that covenant is the covenant of titan this is vital bring all the tithes into the storehouse and prove me now if i will not open to you the windows of heaven malachi chapter 3 verse 10 but hear this and this is what becomes vital and important as vital as meeting the condition is even more important is ensuring the motivation what is the motivation for our giving? Do we give to get or do we give for love? Do we give to get? You see, God is very conscious of transactional believers. There are many believers that are transacting with God. They are just, Lord, take, I'm supposed to collect. When that is your approach, there is a limit to what you will get. When love is your motivation, God does not struggle to release abundance in your direction. He doesn't struggle to, live, uh, to release abundance in your direction. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He doesn't struggle. That is not a struggle for him to release abundance in your direction. As long as the motivation is met. First Chronicles 29 verse 9, verse, verse 3. Here is David's testimony. He said, he said that, you know, First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 3. This is David's testimony. He said that according to the, I've set my affection on the house of my God, my affection. I have therefore made out of my own proper good of gold and of silver, which I have given so before the giving comes, there must be the loving in the heart. 
It is loving that should propagate giving. When a man gives to get, he gets nothing from giving. But when man gives for love, he gives everything from giving. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, he said, If I give all of my goods to the poor, and I have not charity, he said, it profited me nothing. It means it's an unprofitable giving. There is no result from it. So it is not enough, people of God, it is not enough for you and I just to give. No, we are not just engaging in a transactional relationship. No, we are engaging in an affectionate relationship with God. This is so important. This is so vital. When love becomes the motivation, abundance becomes heaven's response. This is important. So you and I must ensure that our giving is love motivated. That's why we are told in 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 8. He said, this do to prove the sincerity of your love. So sincere love is manifested in giving. What that means is this. Love motivates giving. Where giving is not there, love is not there. Genuine love will always motivate liberal giving. Advancing the kingdom of God. You will find individuals like that catching kingdom dreams. God's servant has said this before. He said, if you catch a kingdom dream, you will enjoy kingdom boom. Our access to the boom of the kingdom, the, the, the provision of the kingdom that comes in abundance is our kingdom dream. So catch a dream. Shout hallelujah. Say with me, I will catch.